Hey, right, hello. Hey, everyone. Styles here. And welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Last time on the Stanley Parable, we actually... We tried to escape. We died. Uh... We went somewhere else. We died again. And we went to, uh... Fun Heaven. But yeah, uh... But this time, we're actually going to, uh... Do... The final two have... Well, I... I guess two of the final endings I can do. Just the first one. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. And that's it. <laughs> that is about it for that one. Alright, time to go. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Alright, let's do this. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, right. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Doing the broom closet ending. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Yeah, but there's duct tape. Duct tape is awesome. And the monkey wrench and... It was baffling know. that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. I don't know what that means, but look at these. That, I think those are some flyers. Uh, are, you, that, are you really still in the broom closet? Yeah. Standing around doing nothing? Why? <laughs> Please offer me it's some explanation here. here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. But it's really fun in here. I mean, look at this. Look at this broom. It looks so beautiful. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least she would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Yeah, but... The broom. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Nah, well, they probably But anyway, well, some of them. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. Uh, that all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. No, I'm not. Well, Stanley is, but I'm not. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. What? You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. No. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? 
The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Well, all right. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to mm. pick up the story again. Well, I'm getting boring now. Let's go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. I think all we have left is like one ending, maybe. Well, one ending I can do. Because um uh, one of them includes being here for like around being in a certain uh mini game for around uh four hours and I'm not doing that. I'm not doing four hours. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. And I mean like four hours of like doing something which would probably yeah be boring but yeah the lights rose fun. on an enormous room packed with television screens what horrible secret did this place hold Stanley thought to himself did he have the strength to find out although there is actually one section of this ending that I need to show and then that'd be it. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images oh. on a screen. <laughs> and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this I was place actually thinking where be, I was actually able to like, get jump off or something and then there would be like some kind of ending where she could do that. That would be pretty freaking weird. Okay, let's go. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Hmm. There was a way to go back. Out how um, there was something. Where did it? Oh, you had to wait for a little bit. That's how it was. I remember now. And now, let's go back. Alright, we'll go back to the... Huh. Oh yeah, you go up here and...
No. Right. They refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. Whoa. His own life um, in someone else's control. What happened? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life wow. utterly blind down there? to the world? Huh. Huh. Oh, I... But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power Dang. over another human life. I did what he said. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Was it? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had I get his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. I can't do it yet. This looks beautiful. All right. Wow. All right, let's go. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy.